Welcome to Blaine, Minnesota, where we are in the quarterfinal rounds, the under 20 youth club championships. Emmy Fitzgerald joined by Sarah Lord, where Cincinnati Bell is facing against DC Rogue, two teams that have had a little bit of adversity over the weekend, but this past round, Rogue won, whereas Cincinnati lost. How does that kind of affect each team then coming into a game? I mean, for Rogue, uh, coming off a big win, uh, beating S Seattle. Seattle had only lost once in the history of YCCs until, la um, and that was to Rogue last year before this game. So that's a big win to win over Seattle. Um, for Cincinnati Bell, they lost to the um, Buddha team out of Boston, which, I mean, Boston always has a very strong squad. So I think for them, it's just about trying to rebound. And for Rogue, it's just about trying to maintain and continue what they have going on. So Cincinnati Bell will be in black, while Rogue will be in the white jerseys. And the Bell coaching staff also saying their loss they took care of business on the first day, and so that allowed them to be in favorable position, but they didn't have fun the first half of the last game. What kind of impact does that make, too? Yeah, they said they uh, went down 8-2 at half, but were 6-4 in second half, so they really brought it back. I mean, coming in second day of a tournament in a game you're not supposed to win, things can really snowball. And at, once you go down a break, go down two breaks, and it's really easy to forget to have fun, forget to do the things that make ultimate, ultimate. And you just, you miss one throw, you get down on defense, it can really spiral. So I think getting that six, four second half though, they remember to have fun in the second half. And I think if they remember to have fun here, we're in for a really good matchup between the two teams. And there is a wind, wind on the field. It seems to be kind of a diagonal crosswind headed towards the far cone. The first pull is up. It rolls and is rolling out of bounds, looks like. It's still rolling. <laughs> you can see the effect of the wind there with how far the disc went. So checked right in. Immediate shot to the end zone. And that is Ella Youngst. Familiar receiver for DC Rogue to get that first goal right away. Yeah, Ella is a huge difference maker for this team. She played for DC Scandal last season. Um, this year with going off to college, she doesn't have the time to commit to uh, playing elite club again with YCCs as well. But um, that was a big storyline yesterday for them with their loss to the Montreal team. Not to take anything away from Montreal, of course, but um, Ella went down during that game with a sprained ankle. And so uh, losing Ella, who's... A, a, We'll be saying her name a lot today. Um, <laughs> was a very big impact for them. So I'm glad to see she looks moving pretty well, with that ankle brace. She was moving really well in the last <laughs> round also. Headed to UNC in the fall. Yeah, North Carolina has that great pipeline. So not only are they taking some of the DC players, but they have um, some really good North Carolina youth coming in as well next year, I believe, um, with uh, Kate Lanier, I believe, or Lanier yeah. is on the Warhawks team. Yeah, one of the stars from the Warhawks team is also going to UNC next year. So that's quite the, the power pair right there. They both played for the uh, U-17 or U-19, sorry, mm -hmm. Worlds team this past uh, winter. So, And one of your scandal teammates coached UNC this past year as well. Yeah, yeah, Lindsay Sue uh, helped coach uh, – UNC last year, and she cannot stop talking about how excited she is to have Ella go there, for, for good reason, obviously. So, right off the bat, DC gets a score, but here's the pull. It lands out of bounds, just past the boundary flag, right in front of our broadcaster's booth. So Jeffries will walk it to the middle of the field. Checked in. The first throw is good. Beatrice, but a hand block on the mark. By Ellie Heal. So Rogue with a chance to break. Alston with the disc. Looking for the continuation. 
A bobble underneath. Gets the disc back to Bell. They shoot right away. And that is a score. Bell is able to hold. Maddie Campbell gets that goal. Yeah, we'll see if this turns into an up one, down one affair here. The wind was, I think, diagonal before, but it feels like it's shifted a little and it's going more up downwind right now. As you can tell by the pulls, not quite making it to half field and um, the ease with which teams have been scoring in this end zone. So it could be one of those games where uh, whoever manages to load up a good uh, upwind deep, deep, deep point and get an upwind score will uh, could make the difference later on. So we're tied at one apiece. And I had dinner with Cincinnati Bell yesterday at the Gum Ball, the oh girls' yeah. ultimate movement event. And they're from Cincinnati, where the recent World Ultimate Club Championships were held. And what a thrill. We talk about this US Open for teams to see, youth teams to see adult teams. Imagine worlds happening right in your backyard. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's it's amazing how far along all these youth players are in their development already. And then you just let them be exposed to such elite ultimate, like really understanding everything that's be that they're being taught by seeing it uh, like in person and getting fantastic role models. Um, I'm sure all of these Bell players saw at least a few games, if not more, and got to see all those fun storylines. I asked them who were their favorite teams. They said Fury was okay. one of them and also Zuff, a team out of Switzerland. That's it. I've, I will admit I've never heard of Zuff. That is an interesting choice. Um, Fury is a very popular choice, though, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all inspired by Fury one time or another. Yes, I was very inspired when Fury beat us 15-5 <laughs> this morning. <laughs> too soon, too soon. No, they're, they're a great team, for sure. So checked in nicely with the disc. And you saw the initiation play, but the throw just a little bit out of reach. And But intercepted, got right back. And looking for the end zone shot. Rogue not wasting any time. Yeah, those are two straight throws by Niley there where um, She's just not waiting quite long enough, I think, going downwind. Everyone thinks it's so easy to throw downwind because the wind is helping you. But the wind can sometimes help you a little too much. <laughs> I think in both those scenarios helped her a little bit too much. So I think they'll probably be talking about waiting another second there um, to make sure they can get the completion. So back in play, Bell working out of the vertical stack on the far sideline. The disc is hanging, but Youngst, despite having a bit of a height disadvantage, goes up early to get that block. So now Rogue knocking on the goal line, but I think some miscommunication between Handler and Cutter. Yeah, but uh, for Rogue, at least right now, I think they're pretty happy to be keeping it on this end zone line. Um, I think this is a bit of a field position battle they're currently doing. So we'll see if Cincinnati can move it f far enough up to threaten the upwind. And I think that is case <laughs> in point, exactly what you were describing, Sarah. To give Rogue the disc another possession in their red zone. And through two defenders, still able to come up with it. That's Tornquist. Great hands from Tornquist. Yeah, Caroline Tornquist is a teammate of mine on Scandal this year. Uh, she's going to Dartmouth also this fall. Talk about embarrassment of riches Dartmouth has. They have uh, already, obviously, Claire Trope, Jacqueline Verju, so many good players, and now adding someone like Caroline, who is playing for the U19 uh, World Team, playing for Scandal, <laughs> on this a star of this rogue team. Um, the rich just keep getting richer sometimes in the <laughs> college division, but I'm sure she'll make a big impact there. There is one player on the Rogue roster who's headed to your college alma mater, I believe. Yeah, Kat Sands, number 37. She's um, so far been there initiating Cutter. Um, she's going to Maryland, and we haven't had a ready-made star like this in, 
I don't know, s since I've been playing Ultimate at least. So uh, I was very excited that Kat is going there. However, I felt rather old when she asked why I got so excited. And I had to tell her I went to Maryland. Oh. So I uh, <laughs> guess I've been out of the scene for long enough. That <laughs> didn't work out very well. But um, oh. once she gets there, she'll know <laughs> your legend. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but yeah, this is a, yeah. It'll be interesting to see which, which team on their D-line can get it past about a quarter of the field up. So far, the game has been played in about, in about the left half side of the field, and really 90% of it in the left, 10% of the field almost. So we'll see if Cincinnati here can uh, keep it in that direction. So they will get it going downwind. And they are setting up, looks like a side stack with the disc on the... Same side, looking to try and isolate in the middle. It's really when you send one person at a time into the middle space, reset to the handler, but Alston manages to break up that continuation pass. Right up the line, it's a bounce and batted down. Possession will go back to
The pole lands in. It's on the near sideline. And a huck right off the bat. It's floating through coverage. No good. Immediate dish from Rogue to get the offense going. Looking for another shot up the line. They'll continue. Will it stay in bounds? And it looks like out of bounds is looks being Looks like it is. <laughs> yes, it was out of bounds. So a big swing over the top. There are Bell players there, but the continuation is tipped. So nicely back behind the disc. She finds Young's not in. And but the next throw is that's Ellie Heil. With Gets that goal. It's a break. Yeah, it looks like Rogue was able to cash in on that double break. Uh, one thing that I found interesting was probably an adjustment by Bell. Uh, in the last point, when they were going downwind, they were content to work the disc. Now they're going upwind and up a point when you'd think they'd work the disc, but instead they were getting huck happy. So it'll be interesting to see here going downwind if, they, if their coach says, you know, keep the disc down there. Because, I mean, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if Rogue would be able to work it 70 yards upwind. Um, now their team has had to do so yet. Um, when Rogue did score upwind, it was about a 15 yard field or so they had. So we'll see what Cincinnati's adjustment is here, if they want to be content working it or if they want to really try and put the disc down there and challenge Rogue's uh, D-line offense. So Cincinnati Bell looking to take it within two. This is a quarterfinal round, so the winner will move on to the semis that happen tomorrow. Semis and finals are tomorrow. And, and this is um, Olivia on the pull. She actually is playing for Grit this year, the, the second team out of DC that is uh, that has uh, done well the past couple of years at uh, regionals. They finished second in the region. And she is, I believe, about 15 years old and on uh, grit and is uh, getting a lot of playing time on their D-line this season. So a lot of good club experience for this uh, rogue roster. That's amazing. I've played grit before at tournaments, both won and lost to them. They're a really great squad. Great spot, great spot, Shout out great to my spot. friend, Lucky Kwan, on grit. Yes, right there. Fine with that. Cincinnati rival is also a women's club team out of, they're out of Columbus, but they have some players that overlap. They're here as well. But Rogue on offense, shooting for the end zone. It's a little short, but still caught. Looking for that continuation. And it's another break conversion for Rogue. Yeah, that was, um, you could see Rogue shifted their marks there to really flat off of the pull play because they were anticipating that Cincinnati might want to try and throw a huck. So that flat mark worked out very well because the huck looks were sealed up and a, a swing went a little too wide for the receiver, got the turn. Um, and then that was a very nice upwind throw there. I mean, yes, a little short, but, you know, in this direction, in this wind, just giving your receiver a chance, um, getting it a decent amount of way down the field is uh, pretty impressive. So we'll see what kind of adjustments um, Cincinnati makes in this time out here. And if you're just joining us, thank you. We're back. We had a little bit of technical difficulty, but while you were away, Rogue was able to get a double break. And Sarah, kind of explain that for those maybe who weren't able to see what that means. Yeah, so we're then with a pretty strong upwind downwind scenario here. So. Rogue was able to break upwind with their with their D line, which then meant the next point their D line was able to go downwind. They were able to get a really deep pull and just kind of keep Cincinnati down there and then score the downwinder. So that was uh, a big point for Rogue getting that upwinder and cashing in on the downwind. But um, probably even bigger was the fact that Rogue again just broke upwind. 
Um, I did not anticipate there being this many upwind breaks given how strong the wind is. So uh, this putting a lot of pressure on the Cincinnati offense here because it's an offensive point, but um, you'd have to think that the the advantage is to Rogue given this running defense given the wind scenario. Yes, you would think so. And just a lot of really calm, comfortable throws. Cincinnati Bell able to get one goal. It was a hold early on. Since then, it's been breaks for Rogue. So they're coming out of the timeout. And you can see this shot really shows how massive this sports complex is. Fields even across the street. I was uh, looking up the uh, the field map earlier this week, and I saw that, according to the internet at least, this is the <laughs> largest amateur sports complex in the U.S. Wow. So, uh, yeah, no, there's uh, so many fields all over here. They're able to have uh, three divisions of uh, adult competition and I believe five divisions of youth with a U17 boys and girls U and the U20 boys, girls, and mixed. Exactly. And I think it's because Minneapolis St. Paul put in a bid to host the Olympics many years ago. And part of that is they had to show they had the facilities and capabilities. That's why there is public transportation that comes out here to the airport. Across the street, we have a velodrome for those cycling races, a stadium with yeah. soccer. There's a natatorium. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this, is what, this is how we end up coming to Minneapolis every year, I guess. <laughs> and now, Little did they know there would be some awesome ultimate played here. <laughs> As Bell has it just a little bit past half field. High floating disc intercepted. Nisley is just everywhere. She has the shot immediately. And heel lays out, but the disc goes back to Bell. Yeah, that was a little bit of a short pull given the wind scenario, but uh, after that immediate shot deep by Nisley, they got their field position back immediately. So a travel's called on the throw. We'll go back. So Bell working the full 70 on the near sideline, going upwind. We've seen both big, long passes and short. Here's the deep look, and that is caught. <laughs> full momentum necessary to hang on to it, but there it is as Bell will approach the red zone looking to get into their end zone offensive set. It's isolating a player and it stays up, but not quite in bounds. And the high release backhand is, is it in? It looks like there's some sort of pick discussion, but it's been waved off. And it is ruled a goal. And Cincinnati, the short passes and the deep throw, they get them themselves that hold. Yeah, no, that uh, that deep throw was another great example of you just have to always follow the play in the wind, right? I believe it was actually to the receiver further, closest to us on the screen, and there was another receiver, and then the third receiver was the one who actually caught it. But um, that was a great job by Bell, getting that power position, being able to just say, I'm going to put the disc in this direction, and I'm just going to trust that my cutters are all going to follow the play, and hopefully one of them can make a play. And um, I think that's a huge moment in this game. I think if Rogue was able to break again downwind, then it would really potentially feel like, right, Bell might not have fun, like they were saying in the first half. Right. They forgot to have fun. But getting that upwind hold and now being able to uh, try and cash in with a downwind break, um, you know, that's that's a huge moment in this game. So we'll see, uh, we'll see if Bell's able to get a big deep pull and trap Rogue down there. And real credit to Ella Enders, who caught that big huck as she was still running and rolling <laughs> in the follow through, but managed to hang on to the disc the entire time. Yeah, it was a great read by her. She, you, you, you could see that she, she, she knew it was gonna fade that way and she just saw the disc go up, it wasn't to her, and just 
had the read the whole time and trusted the read. That's really impressive. So the pull headed to Rogue nicely, picking up. Little give and go. Collinson to Tornquist. That continuing. And there are two rogue receivers in the end zone. Youngst is there. Her second goal of the game. Yeah, the wind uh, died down a little bit at that point. Um, I'm sure uh, Bell's pretty disappointed that on their chance to get their downwind D, uh, the wind died down a little bit. I mean, all credit to Rogue, there is still wind, and that was some really smooth offense they had, for sure. But um, it's a bit of a tough break for Bell. Sometimes the wind just plays with your heart a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> exactly. Was it was their opportunity <laughs> to try and get it back. But Tornquist with that great put to Youngst. Yeah, and these two have been playing together for years. Um, a few years ago, Swing Vote, the DC mix mm -hmm. team, won a couple of championships. And um, Tornquist and Youngst were on that team for the U-20 when they won a few years ago. So now they're still, <laughs> they've played Elite Club, they've won mixed, chi mixed titles at like 15. Now they're uh, still playing together here and probably hoping to get, get it together and win a women's champion, girls championship, uh, which has not been done, well, last year North Carolina won. For the first yes. time Seattle had not won, it was North Carolina. Um, so. So wild and the round before the Warhawks game ended a little early, so the North Carolina girls were watching DC Rogue. Yeah, probably s scouting out a little bit. Uh, it's a, uh, yeah, there's definitely a temptation for teams, I think, to look ahead in this scenario, especially for a team like Rogue, who went to the championship last year, to look ahead in this quarterfinal. But so far, they've been very focused, I think, um, and making life hard on Bell. But we'll, we'll see, the wind is not quite as strong. Again, here, we'll see if Bell can get another upwind hold. So Bell with the side stack and that isolation. High stall count, batted down. There's a call back at the throw. It looks as though a stall may have been called back there. But the stall was contested, so it looks like the disc will end up where the turn happened. Back into play. It'll be picked up by Ariano. Throws into space, soars past, disc goes back to Bell. And through coverage, is able to get it. High over the top. Another one-handed grab. And that continuation. Oh, it looks like there was a call on the catch. Um, it looked like a travel. They're seeing a travel call, perhaps. So the players will talk it out. We have ins an instructional observer. So Bell still with the disc, approaching the goal line, hoping to cut the lead within three. It's falling to the ground. Not quite there. Yeah, that, uh, that upwind end zone is hard to keep your patience around and the disc just flew a little too far. But unfortunate drop there for Rogue, giving Bell another chance at this upwind end zone for a big hold in this game. So Horn picks up, has the first look, but incomplete. You can hear the sideline yelling, boost it. So we'll see if this is going to be, yeah, immediate deep look to Alston. So Alston now far corner. She'll continue with the long passes. It's not quite in. 
Rogue yeah, looking for the next pass, but there was a foul called. So checked back in, the quick look, and that's another point for DC Rogue. Yeah, Rogue did a really nice job there of often when your sideline is yelling, boost it, right? You just think, let me throw this disc as far as I possibly can and let's see what happens, right? But that was a great touch throw to Alston to start off the point. Um, just a nice little away chip shot, 15, 20 yards, get, get it moving. And then an even bigger deep shot next, which again, had a lot of touch, able to have the receiver run it down. Um, it's, it's, it really takes an amazing amount of skill to throw deep and catchable downwind. As we were talking about before, sometimes the wind helps you too much and you get excited. So that was some really great touch throws there by Rogue. Yeah, the angle on the disc, some players will say throwing a huck downwind is more difficult than upwind to a certain degree. Absolutely. Upwind, it's much easier to put good touch on the disc, put it out to space. Down to wind, it's, okay, I think this is open. Let me wait a second. Let's wait another second. Okay, now let me throw it as high as I possibly can. <laughs> And then it still may go too far. So it's, it's much more difficult in some ways. Can you release it at your eyebrows to try <laughs> and have that high enough? So Cincinnati Bell down by five, looking for that opportunity to narrow the margin. Yeah, this, uh, this down one hold opportunity for, uh, for Bell to prevent Rogue from taking half, I think is a really Another big point in this game, right? If Bell can get the whole tier, 7-3, maybe get a little momentum, but if they get broken upwind with their O-line to go down 8-2, I think it's, it's going to be really hard for them to get any traction moving forward, I think. So hopefully they can uh, you know, get a nice clean offensive hold here and keep this game interesting. And the pull position will definitely help as well. And... It lands inside of half field. It is on the sideline, which is a little bit tougher spot. Absolutely, and it'll be interesting again to see their strategy here, if they wanna uh, go deep immediately or if they're content to work it. So a pick called right off the bat. but it looks like the disc will stay where it is. Far sideline, tight space, get the block, but a foul is called. Yeah, so far Bell has just been working it in this like one to two yard uh, corner of the side of the field over there. So we'll see if they can maybe try and uh, reverse the field and swing all the way around, turn that corner. Um, but that's difficult in this wind. So we'll see if they just want to try and continue to go up the four side. <laughs> Those swing passes are difficult. So instead, it's a high shot to the end zone, goes over the pile. And falls incomplete, yeah. But it looks like something is called. Um, potentially a stall may have been called there, but it looks as though it was contested. So, Disc will go back to Rogue. We'll see if this Rogue D-line offense can work the full 70 upwind. If they score here, they'll take it to half. But, Bell will have at least one more possession. They're hoping to score this time, but they'll call a timeout. I think that's a wise move. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, Bell need, yeah. All well, these timeouts are, use it or lose it, uh, may as well, going downwind, trying to avoid half being taken. Um, this seems like a good, a good time to call a timeout here. Why do you think teams don't use their timeouts? We're all guilty of it. So I, I have, I think that timeouts serve a specific purpose, and I think some timeout calls, in my opinion, are actually bad for the offense. Um, I think, I think when your structure looks really bad in your offense and you're having a hard time, I very much think that calling a timeout can be good. But a lot of teams call timeouts after a long huck or something like that, but that's when the defense is most disorganized. So in my opinion, I think the timeout is not as useful there. Um, but in this scenario, uh, 
you know, I think they were struggling a little bit to work it. I'm sure they have some adjustments they want to make. They'll really try and see if they can, you know, punch this in, get a nice clean structure. But Rogue is probably saying this is great. We can set our defense. Let's put our best handler defenders on handlers. Let's put our make sure we have someone last back deep. We can even bracket the stack maybe. Um, there's a lot you can do as a defense off a dead disc. So definitely pros and cons to timeouts. I know. Don't you hate it? Somebody catches the deep throw. You're trailing behind. You're sprinting to get the reset. And then they call a timeout. Like, no, we were here. We were here. Yeah. <laughs> As a handler, I'm never the one catching it deep, let me <laughs> right. tell you. But uh, I'm usually the one behind them. Like, no, I was going to. If you threw it to me, I'd throw it back, I promise. <laughs> you would get it right back. <laughs> but Bell calling a timeout for a strategic perspective. Reset, make some adjustments after what's turning into a long point. And the Huck, right away, that's floating and perfectly in stride. Maddie Campbell is able to catch that. And that is a goal for Cincinnati. That was a beautiful throw there by, uh, by Cincinnati. Um, just, a great, just a great downwind Huck, right? It's sat up high, faded in well right to the receiver. Um, that, that was great by Bell. I'm sure that uh, uh, the road coaches are probably like, we had a last pack. How do you get beat <laughs> deep off of a timeout? Um, especially when we know they probably want to huck it. So uh, Jenny Fang and company are probably not super excited at the moment. But for Bell, that is, you know, that was a great timeout call, it turned out, that they were able to set up good structure, uh, get a good deep cut with good spacing, good timing, um, and prevent half being taken, which is huge. And those are those momentum elements that keep the team the spirits up and be able to keep that fun from the rogue side now they'll get the disc on offense going downwind yeah and so far this so far this rogue offense hasn't seemed that challenged by bell i wouldn't say um they haven't really they've had a couple turns but they've been they've felt very in control on their offensive points and the defensive points for versus the offensive points for Bell have been a, the more exciting of the two so far. So we'll see if Bell can put up some defensive pressure at this point and really uh, really challenge this rogue O-line and see if they can get their first break of the game. And you see the field behind the defending champions in their quarterfinal match as Bell Puts up the pull, lands smack dab at center field. Underneath. And just goes out of reach. Yeah, just slightly too far. Looks like the wind pushed that one slightly down and out of bounds. Um, and this is a big break opportunity for Bell. So we'll see if they're able to uh, cash in here. They got about 68 yards to go, though, <laughs> upwind. So we'll see how this D-line offense is able to work. So a big swing is complete. And they'll send it deep. You have Enders trying to reach through. I think Junks might got a piece of that there. Once again, the shortest player in the field getting up above everybody else. Um, but looks like there's a foul called by the Bell receiver. So it's a contested foul. We'll go back to the thrower. So Bill gets another chance here to extend this half and get their first break of the game. So checked back in. Immediate look. Another huck. Two defenders. <laughs> but there he comes, Youngst, through the stack of players. Once again, the shortest player. She does not let her own height get in the way of her vertical abilities. Yeah, she's a uh, part of the We Sit on Shoulders Club, I think. <laughs> so Bell at midfield, 
Shooting for the end zone again. And just a bat away at the last second is Tornquist. But Horn has done a really nice job of hucking upwind here. Those are two straight hucks that were well defended by Rogue since they probably saw it coming. However, they've been flat and out to space and getting a lot of a lot of distance in this upwind. Those are, I think, two of the best upwind hucks we've seen so far this game. So uh, it's it'll be interesting to see if uh, Bell can keep getting turns in this direction. Looks like looks like they have the power to get it upwind. That confidence goes a long way to throw it in the upwind. Rogue working in the downwind, lots of spacing, and in full stride, Youngst is able to catch that with one hand. She's looking for the reset. She'll find it. And through the horde of people, Rogue will get the goal downwind and take half. Yeah, that's a, it's a rough way to end the half for Bell. I know it says 8-3, but... um. Bell really showed their D-line can grind up wind. So uh, I'm sure that that's, that's something good to take in the second half for them. I'm sure they can say, look, I think we can score in this direction too. Let's, let's not give up. There's still a whole other half to play. They were very close, but Rogue taking advantage of the opportunities. So they currently have a five-point lead. So we will take a short break and we'll talk a little bit more about the first half when we come back. We are at halftime where DC Rogue leads Cincinnati Bell eight to three. And I am here with one of the captains of Rogue, Kat Sands. Hey, Kat. Hello. So the first half, you guys were able to get to a lead. What do you think has really been working for you all? I think what really works is our side stack. We've been working on it all year. And I don't know, we've kind of struggled with poaching on handlers before. So we figured out a host stack too, but this team have obviously not been doing a poach on the handlers, so we love to just like ISO those two and then have the back of the stack help out, if anything. So I don't know, we just have cr those crisp cuts and like just grinding through all our tiredness. <laughs> yeah. So. How has the wind been a factor for the game so far? Um, 
Well, today we've got used to it yesterday when it was super windy. Mm -hmm. So we've actually been using it to our advantage because we figured out downwind, it will sink. So just like boost it up high and it will perfectly be just placed to the hands. And then upwind, I don't think we've had any real issues as long as you just like kind of not make it floaty. Um, I would have, I don't know, I prefer to play in the wind because it really just shows like the crisp throws are really what's working. You get a lot of spin. So yeah. who are some of your teammates that you think have been doing really well so far in the game? Um, Ella Youngs is like my superstar. <laughs> um, just watching her run and like go run down every single disc and just grind through every single point really gets me going. She gets so high up for anything and she is, I don't even know how tall she is. How she did she is. catch that? I don't know. <laughs> this is what is amazing about Ella Youngs. Every year I've played with her, she has never stopped amazing me. So what are you looking forward to in the second half to keep the pressure going? I really look forward to our hype. Um, after beating Seattle, we were like absolutely pumped up. So I just, I'm just, my team is just so, like so crazy and we all have learned German last night. So we're all, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that worked, but we're all just like having each other up, having fun. And like, I don't know, we're trying not to do like little nitpick calls or that because we don't like those types of games. So we're like, just play our game, do what works. So. What has been your favorite part of YCC so far? Oh my gosh. Um, I have to just say my team, like they're all amazing people. They're super friendly and I could not complain about a single one of them. Um, but what really gets me going is just meeting these other teams and I've had no bad interactions with any of them. Everyone's super spirited and gritty. Like I hate like blowouts, I hate anything. I love a good hard game and that's what everyone has been giving us. Wonderful, well good luck in the second half. Thank you. That's Kat Sands with DC Rogue. They currently lead Cincinnati Bell eight to three. Thank you.
Welcome back. We're at halftime where DC Rogue is leading Cincinnati Bell 8-3. to Emmy Fitzgerald here with Sarah Lord. Sarah, what do you think have been some of the main takeaways in this first half to sort of tell the story? Yeah, so uh, so, so far Rogue has not been broken yet. Their, their offense is still clean, even though there has been a little bit of adversity uh, later on in the half. Um, and then Bell has... Uh, They've been broken up wind a couple of times, which is I think been really rough for them. Um, we'll see if they make the adjustment of trying to play a little more field position. Um, Rogue has proved a couple of times they can work the full 70 in this direction, but um, it is difficult in the wind. So that's been, it, it really is an upwind downwind game. So that, that's a big part of the storyline in my mind, at least. And Bell has worked it upwind also. And the score, not always an indication of how, how well a team is doing. And even we heard Kat Sands at halftime saying she loves the grittiness of every single game that they've played, this included, just because every team is willing to work so hard. Yeah, and Bell was really close to two different scores in this up one end zone. That really could have flipped the script from an 8-3 game to, you know, it's, that could be a double break for them. That would have been huge. So the second half is underway. Bell on offense. Going downwind, Enders with the disc. She'll put it up right away, but Alston is there to bat it down. She'll pick up in the handler set. That's high up. The continuation is good. But a little bit of a bobble. The disc will go back to Cincinnati. Jeffries up the line. Will it be saved by her teammate? Yes. That's live and up. Beatrice on the near sideline will look to go over the top. Thought maybe it would float enough for that continuation, but just not quite. Yeah, it was a, it's, again, it's tough throwing downwind to get it to sit long enough for your receiver to get there. So, uh, Rogue gets another chance here for a big break, but uh, they have to work the full 70 upwind. So we'll see if Bell can really sit under and force Rogue to have to try some harder shots. And they're throwing into tight spaces. That was a little bit of a miscommunication there. So Jeffries will pick up. And some back and forth. They're on the goal line running out of an end zone offense. The tight shot, Alston was closing in, but there was Enders to get that goal. A good hold for Bell. That's actually Lauren Talbot who caught it. Yeah, with a bit of a Oyo, as it's called, the outside in throw <laughs> to the inside out um, space. So right there, she throws a flick outside in, but trails it to the inside out space. Uh, the Oyo is very in vogue now in ultimate. Uh, so that was a that was a that was a nice throw there though, just tr trailing it into the break side where only her player had a play on it and um, really seen it from high up so that it wouldn't die too much to the wind. So that's a very solid hold there for Bell. And very much needed hold I would say for Bell, right? Going downwind. So they'll come out of half and put the first score on the board. So now the off offense is still going downwind. See Youngst who had such a strong first half. Ella Youngst next college season will be a, she'll be a storyline. I, I can guarantee that with that North Carolina team with a lot of good uh, young players. She'll be a, you're gonna hear that name a lot, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Cannot wait to see the highlight videos and everything that comes out of that college season as Bell pulls to about midfield. Nisley picking up. Young's headed straight for the end zone. Open space underneath for Tornquist. And Youngst. Guess who? She caught it. 
everyone seemed just to expect it at this point. Yeah, uh, you can see she just is, we talked a lot about her vertical earlier this game, but her change of direction and just closing speed is ridiculous. Um, she just gets so much separation on these cuts. She's just able to just really blow by her defender. And um, it's, it's a hard matchup for anyone to have, but especially in this division, like uh, I would not want to be the person drawing that matchup in this game. I don't want to guard Ella <laughs> Youngst either. <laughs> yeah, I, no, definitely not. So, but that was a, that was a very clean hold there by Rogue, going downwind. Um. And it looked like an initiation play as well, where Youngst went deep right away, but they hit the under in Turnquist, but then that continuation. Yeah, they've been running a pretty similar pool play throughout this game so far. Um, if it if it ain't broke, don't fix it, as you say. So they've been doing a bit of a side stack and uh, sending two players deep to take out all the poaches and to just start motion. And the third cutter has been coming under. So sometimes that's been Kat Sands' time. It was Karen Tornquist able to just, after all the defense has been taken away down there with the downwind assumed hawk, they're able to come sweep under. And then the players who went downfield are able to come back under again because they're in a great position to get big uh, under gainers. Um, it's a, it's a very common play throughout uh, all divisions. I think um, it's probably stolen originally from GOAT, actually. The Canadian teams are famous for running that sweep play. So, uh, And yeah. now <laughs> we see it everywhere. So cool to see the international influences of styles as Bell works it out of a vertical stack. But can't connect overhead. Alston will pick up tight spaces. We'll give the disc back to Bell. And they'll hook right away, sensing some receivers open in the end zone. And she was able to hop right on in. And that's another hold for Bell. Yeah, that was a that was a great downwind throw there from Jeffries. Um, just a just a good job of recognizing that. Uh, she had an open receiver, and you could see how she released that disc, right? The disc was angling upwards as she was releasing it, and that's why she got that nice float out to space for a receiver to run onto going downwind. Uh, that's really important. So really great fundamentals there for that downwind hawk. And I think that that was the second really nice backhand hawk that we've seen from Jeffries. She had one earlier. Um, but Campbell, too, doing a good job to catch it and jump into the end zone as well. Yeah, you uh, you really don't want to mess around there by that end zone line. A lot of times, if you if you just if you end up just like one yard out, all of a sudden everyone's running by you. There's chaos. There's defenders everywhere, and you can you know get the disc 69.5 <laughs> yards down the field and not quite convert. So it was really good awareness there to just be like, let's make sure this is a goal, and we don't have to do anything else at this point. <laughs> So really great work from the Bell O-line to get that conversion. So they'll pull to Rogue. If Rogue scores, that'll be double digits for them, but they're currently up by four. You can see that big flat force start. So, Nisley to Turnquist. Turnquist. And just thrown a little outside and really tight person defense from Bell. But tight person defense coming back. Foul called. Yeah, that was um, some really great explosiveness on there by Junks, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what exactly happened there. It was, a, it was a tight window with a lot of pressure, so there seemed to be a little bit of contact, so unclear exactly uh, exactly what happened. But uh, it's good that they're able to talk it out here. Looks like a contested foul, since this is going back. So contested foul there. Uh, Bell gets to keep possession and get another shot of this up on break. <laughs> and frustrating catch or attempted catch that gives more yards 
for Rogue also. So now they're right outside the end zone. The diving catch is good. That's another goal for Rogue. Yeah, it's a, it's a great catch there by Tornquist. Um, in this downwind direction, a lot of times the disc just is really dying there. So it's good awareness to uh, be able to just get down on the ground and dig that one out before it hit the, before it hit the grass. Really good layout form also. Yeah, very safe. Um, often layouts can be a little bit dangerous. You know, you're intentionally falling on the ground, right? <laughs> but, uh, but that was a really good job of uh, keeping her core tight, legs and arms up, landing on that chest area, um, keeping it safe. And now she gets to talk a little to Jenny Faye here on the sidelines, as we can see in the camera. The ever famous <laughs> Jenny Faye, who's uh, just been a staple in the club division for so many years. And some might even call her visionary. Yeah, her, her throwing is uh, really, she just sees things few other people do. And um, yeah, visionary is probably the best way to describe her. And I'm sure she's able to pass that on to uh, the other players in the team. The amount of calm and composure that Jenny Fay is able to have commanding an offense is really one that you hardly see for so long with so much consistency. And I'm even sure for you as, as a mentor and all then passing it along to these younger students, it's amazing. Yeah, Jenny Faye's on the field, you're like, okay, things will be all right. And um, I'm sure she's able to do that as a coach as well. Be like, you know, things will be all right. I'm here, I'll lead you, I promise. And it, it's a good thing to have in a coach. So Bell yeah. with the disc. Enders putting up the hook. That is floating, but a little bit too far, a victim of the downwind. Yeah, sometimes you can just get a little bit too excited there and forget to wait that extra half a second for your receiver to get there downwind. But that was nice flow by the Bell offense there, getting that power position for the big hook to an open receiver. So we'll see if they can keep DC here and get some more good offensive flow going afterwards. So Rogue probably still needing to work about 50 yards to the end zone. The disc is bouncing high, batted down by Cincinnati. Looking to get closer to the end zone, see multiple cutters, but they were all kind of moving at the same angle. We didn't have anyone coming to the disc. Yeah, and again, just a little too far, a little too much uh, of letting the wind help you out there. But it was a good job by Bell to, uh, originally when the disc popped up, two defenders were following the play and knocking that disc down to make sure Rogue did not have another chance. Alston with the disc for DC. The swing across, some acrobatics to catch it. But they keep possession moving it from sideline to sideline. High point grab. And a quick dish to Jones. Back to Alston. And Alston shoots a laser through. Moving pretty fast in that upwind. Yeah, it's rare to overthrow your receivers in this direction. So uh, that was but a lot of good power shown there by Alston. You could tell that she really wanted that hook immediately, though. There's undercut, and she said, no, we're going this way. But now they have the field position, so we'll see if Bell can uh, work it all the way down the field and how patient they choose to be. So Bell wasting no time with the hook. Enders catches it, looks for that continuation, and that is a goal. That's Catherine Beatrice with that reception. Yeah, it looked like uh, the stall got a little bit high over in this direction. And um, whenever the stall gets high, especially going downwind, you're taught to put the disc. But that was a really impressive bailout throw. It was had a lot of arc to it, uh, just made it so that her receivers could make a play, which they did. And another nice around backhand to continue out the points, sitting it up nice and high, let him receiver run onto it. Um, I think Bell's offense in the downwind is really clicking much better this half. I, I agree. 
And they've had a lot of efficiency to get there. And we talked about some of the field position. They seem to be working with the field position a little bit with a, a different strategy than maybe what they had in the first half. Yeah, absolutely. They've, um, yeah, the, the rogue D-line offense has been rather impressive, but it is hard to work a full 70 yards upwind. So I think Bell is starting to think, you know what, let's, let's get it downfield, get it to some of our receivers and put on really tight marks, tight defense and, you know, say, hey, if you can work at 70 yards upwind, congrats, you earned that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's the part of ultimate is sometimes you make an error, but sometimes another player just does something really well and you have to give them the kudos for it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that, that's the thing about ultimate. Offense can be perfect. N defense can do whatever they want. If the offense is perfect, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that always happens in these games. So Rogue has a little more pressure on that initiation play. So it's incomplete. A chance for Bell to break. But instead, the disc possession will go back to Rogue. The big flick to the end zone. Youngst is not quite in. Lots of pivots to move her mark, but the next throw is in. That's a score for Rogue. Yeah, and that was a nice job by Nisley there. She'd had some throws uh, earlier where she was getting the field position, but she wasn't putting quite enough touch on it to be able to complete that that throw downwind. So there, that was a good job, putting enough touch on it so the Junks could run onto it. And um, nice job there by Junks, just using that lefty, you know, going, just being able to step around her mark with that lefty flick and find Tornquist in the end zone who hugs the disc afterwards, happy <laughs> to be done. It is precious for sure. <laughs> so that is 11 for the team from DC, six for Cincinnati. And so far this half has been very even. Um, just teams trading down when holds. Uh, no breaks for either side. Um, I'm sure Cincinnati wishes the first half had also gone this way so that we'd be in a tighter game now because now there's because right now if you're if you're DC you're up by five um, you know if you just keep trading out and holding you win this game right but the pressure's all on Bell here they need to not only hold all their points they need to start getting some more momentum in the upwind end zone so the onus on the defense but for now Cincinnati needs to convert on offense to even give that the defense a chance to get the break. Absolutely. Enders in the fourth space, puts up the backhand, more float. It's completed, not quite in. High release and just off of the fingertips. So Rogue working in the upwind. And that is caught. Fugel within the next throw. It has a lot of float if it can stay in. And it seems like that was out. But the players will confer. There's some discussion on the field. Take a look at the replay. Oh, and it looks like goal has been called. Uh, they don't have the benefit of the replay we just had, <laughs> so I'm sure that both teams were just trying to figure out what happened. Um, that's unfortunate there for Bell, because that, that downwind backhand hook was really pretty. A lot of good float on that. And um, But as we talked about earlier, sometimes when you catch it one yard outside the end zone, that's one of the hardest places to score. So. Um, but, you know, uh, kudos to uh, Rogue there with the, the two back-to-back -back big flicks that were able to carry enough upwind to get them up in this direction. So DC Rogue will register 12 points 
to extend their lead to six. They are within three of winning the game and advancing into semis. This is a, a big opportunity here for Rogue to cash in on that upwind break with their downwind break and really just put the game so it would feel like it's pretty out of, out of grasp right now. But Bell needs to try and hold here with their offense going upwind and see if they can get their own downwind break of their own from this. So Bell seems to be sticking with their traditional offensive line and Rogue seems to be sticking with their traditional defensive line. No, it's changing up with the wind directions. So the downwind pull lands in bounds. Immediately centered. Bell working out of a side stack. And it's blady up in the air, but it works. <laughs> and Bell working it about 65 yards upwind so far, but that last shot is no good. However, there's some discussion on the field. Yeah, Bell had some great momentum there with a couple of nice flat upwind flicks. Uh, the backhand was a little blady, but well read by the receiver, so the receiver can read it. Doesn't matter. It was so blady. <laughs> that is a hard read. Absolutely, but. The disc goes back to Rogue through steps, able to keep that possession. But incomplete. Bell gets no chance for this upwind hold. Working it underneath Campbell. Goes up the line with the strike cut to Horn. And that continuation right on the near sideline, that's an upwind goal for Bell. Yeah, their, their offense did a great job of holding up wind there. And um, the, I'm sure the Bell defense is really excited now to get this big opportunity to uh, get the downwind break. Uh, the Bell offense did hold once upwind in the first half. And the Rogue offense just went up wind looking a little bit unbothered by it, but the wind is really picking up now. So this is a good opportunity for Bell to uh, cash in another break and, you know, get this game a little tighter. And it is significantly more overcast on the field than it was earlier. The wind, I guess, presumably blowing in the clouds. Yeah, no, uh, Earlier this morning, it was actually downright hot. But there was, was no wind, <laughs> all the sun um, probably got a little sunburned, honestly. <laughs> and now the, it's, uh, the clouds have come in, the wind has picked up. It's probably dropped in like the, the feeling of temperature, like 15 degrees at least in the past couple of hours. So I'm sure that affects somewhat the game. Especially from a heat index perspective. So Bell will now pull downwind trying to get a stop against the very strong rogue O-line with a lot of very skilled throwers. Yeah, one interesting thing about rogue, which um, is probably less helpful in the wind, is that a lot of their big name players are cutters, right? Oh, Caroline Tornquist, Ellie Youngst, Kat Sands, probably their three biggest names on the roster are all cutters. So. Um, not to take anything away from their handlers like Nisley, who's been having a great throwing game, but um, it does make it harder in the wind. And it's still up in the air, but that was a block from Enders. And she's headed straight to the end zone, calling for it. So it's high and going through. There's a bid. Youngst was right there in the mix of it. Not sure if there was an injury or foul call. Um, Youngs gets so much momentum when she, ru while running, the second time that something has happened after the the 
potential D that she's been 20 yards away by the time she realizes what happened and had to come back. Uh, when you get going that fast, I'm sure it's hard to stop. That momentum carrying you. So the players are discussing what was happening, but really great work from Enders having the bid to get the block and then immediately darts to the end zone, knowing that if a hunt goes up, it's going to travel pretty far. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, that's the that's the ideal scenario as a defender, getting the block and then getting to immediately run deep and catch the goal in the end zone. Didn't work out to be a goal immediately there, but they flipped the field. You know, now Rogue has to work 70. So there was no call on the play. Well, the previous play. There's a call now. Foul. Checked back in. Quick undercut. Looking for that continuation. Rogue not holding on to the disc for very long. It's low, but caught. High up, but there. And the end zone look. That's the upwind hold for Rogue. Youngst just seems unstoppable in the end zone. Yeah, that's bookends for Youngst. Um, just a, you know, big primetime player this game, I would say. She might be the MVP of the game so far, I would say, just as far as making big plays on defense, uh, catching, I can think of at least four or five goals already this game. Um, it's, it's certainly a luxury to have receivers like that as a thrower. <laughs> Something that you just love once you're the one throwing. And, and you can tell that Ella really loves being the receiver to some of these talented throwers as well. Oh, absolutely. And I'm sure she's also very appreciative of throwers that are in the end zone. As a cutter, that's always the dream, right? You don't have to do anything else. You're just done. Um, so, yeah, no, that was – and that was some nice flow there by Rogue. It's the – like – all the way down the field, full 70 yards upwind. Pretty good fundamental offense there. Um, just hitting their next receiver, getting good separation. Um, that was very impressive. And really great timing as well. So Rogue within two. They have 13 to Cincinnati seven. And we're about seven minutes away from the soft cap. Looks like it probably won't affect too much since Rogue is already at 13. Um, looks like, yeah, it'll probably be a game to 15. So Horn in the center, works it up. Continuing on, plucked out of the sky is Alston. You can see that active mark from Campbell. That made the throw much tougher. A lot of pressure on Alston. Yeah, Alston got that great D and was just looking to shoot deep immediately, but a great flat mark there. So now Bell right outside the end zone. That quick dish is good. That is Campbell with the goal. And an offensive hold for Bell upwind. Um, you know, in the second half, I think we've had maybe more goals scored in this upwind end zone than the downwind end zone, which is uh, very interesting given how strong the wind has been. Um, but that was that was a great job by Bell there of uh, getting the disc down the field, and then even though there was a turn, putting on a really strong mark to keep the disc there. So Campbell not giving up. I'll argue her mark really helped force the turn to get the disc back to Cincinnati, and she was able to score as a result. Yeah, we'll go ahead and give her bookends there. I, yes. I, think, I think good marks really deserve a lot of credit. Uh, if you think about it, you're half the defense when you're on the mark, right? You can, you, you're supposed to take away half the field, and everyone else takes away the other half. So if you can take away that much of the field as one person, that's, that's really impressive. So great job by Campbell there. And just really good, I think, recognition that – we're, the, Rogue is going downwind. They want to put it. I need to be really big and active and taking away any hucks. Definitely. So Rogue will pull. Rogue will receive the pull, rather. 
they're going upwind, but they're showing, as both teams are, that they're able to work it upwind. So Rogue, far sideline, into power position. Two receivers deep. Youngst catches it. That's another goal for Ella Youngst. Yeah, even when Tornquist is the attendant receiver, Young still gets the goal. But um, but that was a good job there of uh, just, you know, following the play. There were two rogue receivers. I think if Young hadn't been there, Tornquist probably could have made a good play on that disc, but also good communication with uh, Ella calling her off there, saying, hey, I have the better read. Um, and just nice flow upwind. Um, they're really... You know, I promise you there is wind. You might not be able to tell, by the way, what these offenses are holding, but I promise you there is a substantial amount of wind in this game, and both teams are showing that they can throw regardless. So Rogue now within game point if they can get a break. However, Bell in this second half, despite being broken one time, showing a lot of offensive consistency. Absolutely. I believe it was 8-3 at half, and now it's... 14-8, so 6-5 second half. Not not a bad showing for Bell so far the second half. Um, similar to what happened in their first game earlier today, they were saying, where they went down 8-2, and then their second half was 6-4. Um, I'm sure it's hard to come out strong to start a game, so uh, it's, but it's, it's impressive to be able to bounce back, and I think they showed a lot of resilience. Takes a lot of mental fortitude. I love how ready they are, all seven players with their hands up. So one-on-one, on one, the cutting space, able to complete, continues up the line. They'll center it. Some short passes until now, but get one hand in there. Rogue breaks up that really smooth bell flow. Yeah, there's a lot of good power upwind, but it's hard to just get it far enough out in front that the, res that the defender can't make a play. So without hesitation, Rogue puts it, it seemed like as far as they could down the field. Yeah, it looks like they're playing a little bit of field position, um, although I'm sure, I'm sure the Rogue coaches would have liked to maybe wait another second or two so that there's a good chance for the receiver. Oh, Bell back on offense. <laughs> Run through block. And another chance here for Rogue to win on D. So a quick swing and the continuation. But it's tipped up in the air. The second attempt. It's caught, but the question is, is it in bounds? I was looking through about four people. I, I did not have a good angle on it. From here, it seemed as if it might not have been in bounds, although I think foul is what is being currently discussed. Um. Oh, you were right. So foul was called, I guess, on the initial catch attempt, uh, I believe. So if foul was called the initial catch attempt, then even though it was caught potentially out of bounds afterwards, it is irrelevant that it stays there. So it looked like uncontested. We'll come back into play and through the holes, has to go back on the goal line. A chance to the semis for Rogue and right to the middle. That is a completion. Miranda Baltax catches that one. And uh, that's that's big for Rogue there to win on D. I think at all times you always want to win on D, right? I mean, your offense can get you wins in the end, but um, breaking to win is just so much better feeling in general. 
um, for Rogue. So that's, I mean, that's a pretty dominant victory, I would say, for Rogue. 15-8. Um, Bell certainly had a great second half and had a lot of good chances, but um, I think Rogue is kind of placing their case as uh, another title favorite this year. Yes, you can see why the defending champions were taking a look at Rogue as they defeat Cincinnati Bell 15 to eight, moving on into the semifinals. That will be tomorrow. And so much athleticism from both sides of the disc. What were some things that really stood out to you, Sarah? Uh, well, we're currently seeing a bit of an Ella Junk's highlight reel, it looks like. She had some great plays, but I think, I think what really stood out to me was the fact that um, just the depth of throwing on both teams. There were multiple players on each team that were able to consistently challenge upwind and were able to consistently put it afloat downwind. In these throwing conditions, it's um, really difficult to get to get good throws off. I mean, both teams had great defense, really tight, but just the depth of throwing was really impressive to me. So this has been produced by Fulcrum Media, presented by USA Ultimate. For Sarah Lord, I'm Emmy Fitzgerald. Thanks for watching. See you next time.